be a private breeding facility, not open to the public, just with a bunch of different species of antelope that he would breed together and then sell to other zoos and preserves like this. And the goal with that is um, just to stop a lot of the inbreeding from happening in zoos in captivity. Um, now, what happened to change that mostly was that he would just drive his friends around in jeeps like this and they said it's amazing and you need to open it to the public. And also um, his wife Nancy Lang was the curator of birds at the San Francisco Zoo for about 15 years hmm. and she is very much into education and she wanted to start bringing uh, school groups here to see all the animals and they ended up opening to the public July 4th 1993. So actually just a couple weeks ago was our 20th anniversary of being being open to the public, um, but yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. um, we have some here. Um, so, is he kind of a husky guy with silver hair and a beard? Yes. Oh, so he was having breakfast this morning, right? Yeah, he okay. might have been down there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, zebras, though. Um, <laughs> They are in the equine family, same as horses and donkeys, so you can breed together a zebra and a horse and get a zorse. You can also get zonkeys by breeding together zebras and donkeys. Um, but just like the mule, which is the mix of the horse and the donkey, um, the, z the zonkeys and the zorses will be sterile, so they won't be able to have any more kids of their own. So <laughs> it's just something that happens in, hap in captivity. Um, if you look at pictures of zonkeys, um, it's really weird. It's like, it looks like a donkey, but it has black and white stripes only on the legs. Um, hmm. But zebras themselves, what they are really well known for are, of course, the black and white stripes that you see right here. And those stripes are camouflage for them, helps them blend in, but it's different than any other camouflage out there, you know. Most animals, like the eland, big guy over there, his camouflage is helping him blend into what's behind him, the environment. Um, but you see, it doesn't really work so well with the zebras with that. So what their camouflage is doing, it's helping them blend in with each other. So in the wild, when a group of zebras runs into something like a lion, they will clump really tightly together as a group, and that will create what's called a dazzle effect and it'll make it really hard for a predator to pick out one single zebra. It's messing with the predator's depth perception. They can't tell where one zebra ends and where the next one starts, and it just looks like a big zebra blob, so they end up leaving it alone. Um, so they do have really good camouflage, even though to us it looks like they stand out quite a bit. And the stripes that you see here are in their fur, not in their skin. You can mm. tell because it goes right up into the mane as well. So if you were to shave one of these zebras, I don't know why you would want to shave a zebra, but <laughs> if you did, it would not have stripes anymore. It would be a solid black skin huh. color, just like uh, the nose on their face. Oh. So the fur color is the... Okay, so like fur is white colors? and black. Uh -huh. Skin, skin is just black. La, la, la so, <laughs> you know, the question everyone always asks, are zebras white with black stripes or black with white stripes? Since they have the black skin, but also black fur stripes and also white fur stripes going over that. I think that the best way to answer that is that they are black with black and white stripes. Oh. But it's a hard question to answer. By the way, this is the dominant male right here. You can probably tell. Um, and we had five baby zebras this spring. Mm -hmm. I can see two of them lying behind there, and then the rest are probably a little bit further down the hill with their moms. Mark, it looks like they have nothing to eat. Look around. Yeah, not a whole lot growing out here, right. mostly because they've completely overgrazed the hillside. Mm -hmm. um, and we mm -hmm. sold a lot of the animals in here, so hopefully that will change. But we um, we don't, you know, they don't just eat this. We bring food out for them mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Um, so the feed truck will probably be out here in the next hour or so, and they bring out a lot of alfalfa, alfalfa. And grass hay for them to eat. Oh, okay. Hey, buddy. Come on. What you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, why are you acting weird? You want us to leave? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it means go. You say go, 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 go. go. <laughs> 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 Is it what you need? <laughs>